Steve Higgins. I'm the sales director for Shelly USA, and, and I'll be running through um, Shelly 101 training with you guys. Uh, you get, get a nice little overview of all the Shelly um, possibilities, I guess you could say. And uh, any questions, I'm more than happy to uh, stop, take them, and kind of branch out on anything that we kind of need to go over. So, um, just kind of an agenda for you guys. So just running over kind of what are some of the smart home challenges that we see, um, who is Shelly and you know, what, how, do, how do you use Shelly essentially? So now some general smart home challenges that I'm sure you guys are all kind of seeing on the daily basis. There is a lot of manufacturers out there, a lot of protocols, no common language. Um, you know, there's so many different MQTT, webhooks, scripting, all types of things that are built in there right now. And it's all extremely complex. Um, and really, we just kind of want to know, is there a way that you can really tie it in with, with one system? Um, so what we can see in the pro market, especially in the CD channel, you can see a lack of functionality. There's a lot of times there is specific fixes that people are looking for and they can't necessarily find them. Um, so that, that's really where we come in and we can definitely help that. So right now, obviously, there's a lot of different areas in the home that you try and fix. Um, and essentially what we've done is we've been able to knock out most of them. Um, so sensors, energy, manual control, lighting, you know, right the way even down to appliance control. Um, I didn't include hi-fi on there, but we can control the power to hi-fi AV devices. Um, you know, so we can create scenes and custom, custom scenarios for that type of thing as well. Um, the great thing is that it all does tie in with any any hub that anybody has currently, or you can just use the Shelly app and, and have no hub at all and just go on the cloud side of things uh, and do it that way. Um, but essentially, you have full control over your temperature, your lighting. And uh, sorry about that. Your climate control, uh, any garage doors, shutters, uh, and blinds. So, Shelly, as an overview, there is a lot of different Shelly pieces. And I was talking to somebody last night. You guys just have a whole lot of Legos. What do I do with it? <laughs> so, it really much is Lego for the adults. Um, so our pro series is DIN rail mountable so that you can essentially create a panelized lighting solution. Depending on the number of channels that you need, you can essentially spec out a job in that regard. Uh, the plus series goes right behind your switches and your outlets or even into some devices in a lot of cases. Uh, sensors, um, that's really where the home automation truly ties in. And then we have some more plug and play devices as well. Um, but it truly is about the combination. Um, so we have Wi Fi, we have LAN devices, and Bluetooth. We also have just launched our first Z Wade device in the US, which is our uh, Z Wade plug. That is available now. So you should be able to see that here pretty soon. I believe that uh, Blackwire has some come in here pretty pretty soon from what I believe. Um, but the great thing is about Shelly is the compatibility. Um, we have open API documents so that you're able to go in and, and you know essentially integrate it into whatever project that you're doing, whether it's a control four pro platform that you're using, uh, RTI, Crestron. We do have native integration with URC. So that's a that's kind of an easy one to, to work with. Um, but we have great drivers that, that people are very committed to developing for us in the other, the other platforms. So it's definitely uh, one of the more unique solutions out there. The great thing that they, they find with us is they, they don't see us as any kind of competition because they see us as a solution. 
that complements their their build outs. So um, say somebody's doing a control four job, but they want some leak detection. They can use our Shelly floods, place them around the house. It will tie into their current ecosystem. And, and that truly kind of adds value to that job and, and that adds value to your bottom line ultimately. So let's look at the, the Shelly app for a moment. So if you don't have a control four or an RTI or anything, anybody else that you're trying to integrate with, Shelly does have a very functional user interface with its own smart control app. And it has a web GUI with a web interface as well. Um, the idea behind Shelly is it, with the power monitoring functionality, you can actually create load balancing and, and staggered startup. And what that means for these guys is that they can save money on their energy bills by scheduling specific devices to turn off, uh, use the sensors and lighting to combine for presence detection, essentially. So if there's no motion detected, they can turn lights off. Again, my son, I love him, but he leaves all of my bathroom lights on. So <laughs> thankfully, I've just got a, a blue motion in there and the relay so that that will shut off if there's no motion detected after uh, roughly about 12 to 15 minutes. So um, that's definitely one of the, my favorite things to do with Shelly. Now, how do you connect with Shelly? I mentioned it before. We have Wi-Fi devices, we have LAN devices, and we have Bluetooth, and now Z-Wave. So Shelly Wi-Fi operates on 2.4 gigahertz. Um, you definitely want to have a good router. And I know that uh, Blackwire has partners and, and brands that they stock for, for good routers. Um, good Wi-Fi connectivity across the whole building is pretty important. Um, absolutely, Cody, Netgear and Ruckus. Now, what we also suggest is set up a dedicated IoT network for Shelly devices. That way, there's no interference across the other networks uh, and the, the rest of the main house. We'll talk a little bit about the Z-Wave technology here shortly, um, which is a complete game changer in terms of the functionality. Um, but it definitely means that there'll be less interference on the network. And you will, uh, you know, you'll see more reliability with your, your devices. Um, the beautiful thing about the Wi-Fi devices, all of the Plus series, the Pro series, and, and now the new Gen 3 minis, they all operate as Wi-Fi range extenders. So they will communicate with each other on a mesh. Um, uh, and that way you don't have to worry about Wi-Fi getting to the entire house. Um, it's obviously suggested that you get as best coverage as possible, but uh, we know in, in this day and age, it's not always a given. All of our Plus and Pro devices support Bluetooth. And the great thing with the Bluetooth is that, that allows our Bluetooth sensors, which uh, we'll get onto here shortly. Um, they will allow you to connect uh, to all those Wi-Fi devices and it adds a gateway as a third party for all Shelly Bluetooth devices as well. So if you have a Wi-Fi device installed um, and you wanted to add a bunch of Bluetooth sensors, then you can do that. If you don't have any relays, any plus or pro devices from Shelly, you can still use the Bluetooth sensors, but you would need our blue gateway, which uh, if you can see on my screen just there, it's a little Bluetooth dongle. Um, and just like your Bluetooth mouse, it will plug straight in and then we'll scan for any uh, Bluetooth sensors. Now, for more centralized solutions, uh, the Pro devices do support LAN connection. Um, they get hardwired straight in as well as have the Wi-Fi functionality as well. Um, so, you know, you can save time by cabling uh, and applying a LAN connection to the first Pro device and then that will allow you to have that full full capability um, because that will then operate as a Wi-Fi range extender. So, and as I mentioned previously, the uh, new Shelly Cubino Wave 
Um, we're extremely excited about this. We think this could definitely change the market somewhat. Um, the first device that's available to, to the US market is the, just the plug version, um, very much similar to, to the ones that you'd see um, already. It's the same functionality as the Plus version, but on Z-Wave. So it operates at, at regular US frequency. So that means less interference on the network, quicker response times. And we, the only proviso is that you would need a Z-Wave hub. Uh, we are developing a Z-Wave hub in Gateway, but it's not here yet. Um, as soon as it becomes available, we will let everybody know because <laughs> We definitely want to be shouting that from the rooftops. So let's get into the actual relays and the controllers. So what are these guys? What you want to be identifying when you're looking at a job and potentially looking at Shelly is how many channels am I trying to control? How many switches? How many outlets? How many functions on a fan, for example, a ceiling fan? So if you have a single gang wall box, all you would need is a Shelly plus one. Single channel relay, 16 amps, uh, and that would give you the dry contacts as well. Um, this is showing 16 amps. Our UL version is only 15 amps, um, but it's the same functionality. Um, and the plus one PM allows for power metering as well. So anywhere that you see a PM on our Shelly devices, that means that it's power metering. So you can see the consumption. If you use some scripting, you can also see the actual local kilowatt hour rate so that you can actually see the actual savings on some of the things that you guys are trying to do. Now, say you have a three or a four gang wall box, um, you can actually use only two devices as opposed to three or four if you try to control all four switches and what you would do is you can use our shelly plus i4 at the top left and combine that with the plus one or plus one pm and that would give you the full functionality over all four switches uh, as opposed to just the one Additionally, the plus 2 p.m. is if you've got a, a two-channel scenario, say you've got a ceiling fan and you've got fan and lighting functionality, that is great for those guys. Um, in addition, it does have roll shut control, so it, it works on a bi-directional motor. So blinds, garage doors, uh, Venetian blinds, you know, any rollers, shutters, things like that. Say you had an, an awning in the backyard that, you know, folded out, folded in, you could have that on, on a plus 2 p.m. pretty nicely. Um, we just released two devices on on this uh, page called the Shelly Plus Uni. It will replace the, the old Uni, uh, but it is a universal sensor input, and it allows you to control devices based on sensor applicability, which we'll get into here shortly. Um, but you can hook any sensor up to it, whether it's humidity, temperature, light sensors, uh, soil moisture, pH balance, anything that you need, this sensor input will allow you to control all of that. Um, now we get to more lighting specific, and we've got the Shelly Dimmer 2, which is going to be phased out and replaced by a either a plus dimmer or a gen three dimmer too. And what that'll mean is that'll be uh, better functionality, faster, uh, more memory, faster response, and the same type of functionality. Uh, very, very popular product is the RGBW2. Um, I know that's a black wire favorite. Uh, so that allows you for LED light control, um, either a low voltage or on, on a line voltage as well. And we actually just uh, released in the last three months since Cedia, I know that, um, the, the plus zero to 10 volt dimmer. Everybody's been crying out for a zero to 10 volt dimmer from Shelly and we finally got it. Um, the great thing is the price point as well. Um, so it's in the same range as, as the other the plus devices as well. 
um, so you're not going to have to break the bank. So at CES just last month, we launched the Gen 3 series. Um, and they include the Gen 3 minis and the Gen 3 H&Ts. And what this means is that the minis are a much smaller form factor. If anybody's seen those guys, they are a lot smaller than uh, the plus plus relays. And they come with eight amps. They're, they're a lot more manageable to, to throw on at the back of a switch inside of Warlocks. And they have eight megs of RAM, faster processing speeds, and they are matter upgradable. Once, once matter has the capabilities figured out for Shelly's, we... Uh, we will have that functionality and that compatibility with Matter. Now, um, question we've had is what product can we use if we need more than 16 amps, like a 25 amp relay, for example? We do have that coming up and that will be with our pro devices. Um, and we'll be able to run through some of those in a second here. Um, the idea with the, the power metering on the smart lighting control is that you can have, you can essentially create scenes with the dimmer too, for example, so that you can have night mode, movie night, whatever it is, you can trigger that scene and set specific uh, power metered and locally controlled uh, lighting scenarios. Same with the i4 that you see on the left, if you have the dimmer two hooked up to the actual fixture, as I was mentioning before, um, then you have the I4 in the wall box that will allow you to have all four switches controlled and then talk into the dimmer two for the actual dimming functionality. Um, I did mention the sensor control before um, with the plus uni, but a really nice uh, device that we have is the plus add-on. This allows you to put up to five temp probes in. You can pretty much put any sensor in there. Um, and it just simply clips onto the back of the, uh, like the plus one, the plus one PM. And then you've got sensor control over that relay. Um, allows for much more complex scenes and scenarios we see this in, uh, we're doing some hotel projects we've seen this in, and essentially somebody's using a light and a wind receptor to figure out you know, whether they want the blinds to operate. Uh, and we're able to do that with the Shelly Plus Uni and some sensors. And it's the same kind of uh, application with the Plus add-on. Touching on uh, the the DIN rail stuff with the pro devices here, everything goes on the back of a DIN rail with the pro devices and that allows you to create that centralized panel solution. Now, um, before we were asked about the 25 amp relay, I believe that get, that's up to the pro two, uh, that allows you up to two times 16 amps and 25 amps max, I believe on one channel. So that allows you to, to do that with dry contacts as well. Um, but it essentially mirrors the plus devices in terms of the, the channel functionality. So how many channels do you need? How many amps do you, do you need to cover as well? So um, the good thing with the, the dual cover and the Pro 4 PM is they do have a, a panel as well. So you can see what is actually being covered any energy consumption as well. Um, question that we had was, will Shelly offer an RGBW, RGB and IC solution? Uh, it isn't currently on the cards right now. Um, I reviewed our product roadmap last week and it's not looking like we have something like that here initially. As soon as we do, we'll, we'll let you know. Just diving back into the Pro 4 PM here. Um, again, it allows you to have the LAN capability, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, uh, four channel relay switch. So four outputs, 16 amps each, and the, uh, the total device maximum is 40 amps. 
Uh, now, it, the Pro devices do come with overpower and over voltage protection. And what that'll do is that will trigger a notification to the user. And if it goes above, it will shut the device off and allow you to reset it once it's at safer, safer levels. Um, and we kind of go into that here in the next next slide here. So we do temperature protection. Um, so these are rated for IP66 kind of scenarios. Um, we recommend putting them into an IP66 enclosure. Then they're still roughly, I think it's got to 125 degrees and I want to say minus five degrees Fahrenheit is where it goes to on the uh, environmental temperature. Um, but they are also using flame retardant and flame resistant materials for added safety as well. This is my favorite slide because this just opens up all of the possibilities for your automation. Um, we actually are doing a lot with age in place and assisted living facilities. And what this, this page allows us to do is automate, but it also allows us to trigger actions. So starting at the top left, we've got our standard plus, plus plug US, uh, 15 amp relay with power metering essentially the same as your plus 1 p.m., but it's the outward facing goes straight into the outlet. Uh, as well, we've got the, the new Cabino wave plug, um, but we have our Shelly TRV. Uh, it is a thermostatic radiator valve that just screws onto and replaces regular radiator valves. That will allow you to control the radiator through your apps and through your device. Um, now, if you were to combine that with the Shelly H&T Gen 3 at the bottom left, you're essentially able to create dynamic temperature control based on set points. And you can essentially say, don't go above or below a specific uh, temperature. And the TRV will ensure that you're in that range. Um, the button one. The, the Shelly button one is our Wi-Fi button. It allows up to four actions with single, double, triple, and a long press. Um, and the same with the Shelly blue button, which is much smaller, but, it, but that operates on Bluetooth. Um, the great thing with the Bluetooth button actually is it comes with a, you can see the little hook there. Uh, I may or may not have hooked one up to my grandma in case she's fallen. Um, and what that does is she hits that button and that will trigger a light scene in the main living room where probably most everybody is at the time to alert for an emergency or, or anything like that. So that's just one use case that's that saved us on a few occasions. Um, at the bottom, you can see the Shelly Blue Motion. This did replace the Shelly Motion 2. Um, it is built in temperature, looks, and vibration sensors. So you've got the full functionality. It's a much full, smaller form factor. Um, similarly to the Shelly blue door and window, which replaced the door and window too. Uh, so again, it's much smaller. It's much more agile, um, but the functionality is, the great thing about the Bluetooth is they last a lot longer than the old Wi-Fi devices. Um, so it's definitely, uh, much much better for everybody else uh one of the things that that i wanted to talk about is the flood um the flood is one of our gen one products it's one of the originals and it has saved so many people so many thousand dollars worth of uh, of damage because the flood detector allows you to detect moisture and leaks and what we've done is we've created a kit where that will allow you to combine a Pro 1 PM with a uh, solenoid with the, once the flood detects the leak, it will talk to the Pro 1 PM, talk to the water valve and shuts the water off within two to three seconds of the leak being detected. Now you can remotely turn on, remotely turn off, but it will also notify you. So if you 
ensure that you label your devices as you install them so that you know where they are. And yes, Cody, uh, I think when we were out in Fort Lauderdale Cedia Tech Summit, you the flood was definitely a savior for, for Cody that week. Um, <laughs> so I'm glad we could help. And while we were at CES, uh, Tim Young, our CRO, had a similar emergency in his, in his roof. And even though he was in Las Vegas at CES, he was able to actually call his wife, get the plumber connected and say, you know, get out there and fix it, please. Uh, so uh, then we've just got the Shelly Gas and the Shelly Plus Smoke. These guys are not UL listed yet, so uh, we are working on that. So we, we should have that soon. It is available in the non-UL version. Um, so if you need them, let us know. I did touch on the buttons a little bit before, um, but for the Bluetooth, obviously it's lower energy consumption because it's smaller devices. Uh, now, I've had questions about this. The, these devices do work on the same mesh functionality in the mesh network as the plus Wi-Fi devices. Um, and you know, you keep adding on to the network and essentially creating that that web and mesh. Uh, so that they will continually communicate with each other. Uh, they do have faster reaction uh, because there are no sleeping devices and they, they operate in beacon mode. So they're not, not fully live. Um, I kind of covered this, um, but essentially what you can do is you can set actions and scenarios in your app or in whatever uh, platform you're using to, to create those scenes and scenarios. So if somebody wanted to click movie night, that could set the lights to 40%, close the blinds, turn, <laughs> you know, put a, put a popcorn maker on or something, you know, if, if somebody had that hooked up to a plus plug, um, allowing for, for that type of unique action. Do the contact, just had a question from Brad. Uh, do the contact sensors have supervision, ensuring non-interference and bypass threats about security from hacking? It's a great question. So all of our Gen 2 and Gen 3 devices have TLS encryption. So they are the Plus, Pro, and the Gen 3 devices. So they do have uh, that security from hacking. Uh, contact sensors. Um, I'm not sure what you mean about the supervision. Uh, what they will essentially do is notify a user or it can trigger an action. So if you put them on a door, for example, and, it, and there's somebody not supposed to be on there, um, and yes, there would be an alert for a tamper, for example, um, definitely let you know of that. Um, but essentially the the contact once it's either tilted or you know there's no no contact detected it will trigger a scene it will trigger a, a, a notification or even if you hooked it up to a, an alarm system that was currently integrated you could have it sink in on, on that end as well which kind of takes me to our little security bundle i guess we've created um so it comes with uh, we've got two versions, the regular and the XL. It comes with the blue motion and the blue door and window and a, a, a gateway as well. So you can, it doesn't have to be a security bundle, but it's a good kind of gateway into, into Shelly um, if you wanted some of that automation uh, available. So I hope I answered that for you, Brad. Um, feel free, my information's at the bot at the end of this and you're always welcome to reach out. Um, TRV a little bit here. Um, can we replace any any old thermostatic valve very easily? Uh, allows for temperature measurement, uh, custom scenes and schedules, and it does allow for external temperature support, sensor support. So if you do have those Shelly H and Ts, uh, they can interact with this device to create that dynamic temperature control. Uh, to me, the, the Shelly power metering is, uh, it's very game changing. 
um, we're seeing a lot of requests for compatibility with EV charging, with solar, or even just whole home monitoring. Um, so the top you see our Shell EM that goes straight behind the wall, um, you know, straight in, in behind with a switch or an outlet. Um, obviously the, the CTs will go, go right around the wire there as well. Um, but the Pro 3 EM device that that's just won awards. It is, it's very, very versatile. So it operates as a three phase energy meter, but it also does split phase and single phase. So if you can combine one, maybe two of these devices, you can monitor first off anything post inverter. We don't do anything DC related here on the on the energy metering, so it's all post inverter. Um, but this will allow you to monitor your solar consumption. It'll allow sorry what the solar is providing to you, I should say. <laughs> it will allow you to monitor what the grid is pulling and also uh, any of your home consumption. Now, with the use of PM devices like a plus one PM, a, a plus two PM, for example, that's when you can start to create your dynamic load balancing. So uh, now initially the Pro 3M didn't come with contact control. So we had to create a switch add-on for the Pro 3M that does allow you to con contact, have contact to control over the Pro 3M. Um, for that that functionality so say you wanted to set an ev charger um to only work from 11 p.m to 2 a.m when it's non-peak hours something like that you could have that set up with the pro 3 m switch add-on so you could still plug the car in then you would have the device turn on at 11 p.m and it would kick start the charging process and that way you're not soaking up all the power that that's just been generated uh, the Shelly PM Mini, um, that is a 16 amp power metering, no relay, but it will allow you to, to have that uh, monitoring on on the circuit. And then the Pro EM50, we just came out with that. That is a two channel single phase energy meter with contact control. Um, essentially, if you needed to do 50 amp or even up to 120 amp, it can cover it. So. Um, Another question, can a Shelly Blue Button 1 be used for a garage or gate opener? Yes, that's a fantastic question, and we will definitely get onto that. But yes, essentially, it will allow you to do that. Um, if you essentially get back into Bluetooth range, it will be rescanned and re-pulled to the, to the network and allow you to converse with the plus 1 or plus, plus 2 p.m., whatever you have working with your gate or your, your garage opener. Uh, just going back to the Pro 3M a little bit here. Uh, it does allow you for um, 120 amp. We do have a 400 amp version for more of that commercial use. Um, and it is great for in-home or small to medium business scenarios. So we're actually getting a lot of requests for uh, smart parking wherever there's an EV charging in a parking lot, for example. There's a, uh, what do you call them? An EV charging software company that is using these to essentially mon monitor using their software platform across multiple smart city uh factors or kind of installations. So it's very diverse and uh, allows us to a lot of different things. So what I get asked all the time is how do I use a Shelly? Now that you've known a little bit, bit about what it is, what we can do with that is we can start creating those smart actions or here are some use cases. So sunrise or sunset actions. Um, so Shelly can switch on or switch off lights based on uh, sunset or sunrise hour. Um, what you'd use for that is a dimmer two plus one p.m. or one of the pro devices, and all that is is you just grab whichever relay it was and how many channels you were looking to control over that uh, at, at that time. 
same with the right light at the right time. Um, if you were to combine that with the lock sensor, for example, in the, the door and window two contact controller, the contact sensor, you can essentially have that say, okay, when, when it's not detecting enough light, trigger the lights to turn on. Um, similarly to with the door and window contact, uh, you know, if the door or window opens, turn a light on, turn a light off. So if, if somebody's going to the bathroom at night, they open the door, they can turn on the, say it's connected to a dimmer too, you would have that set to 40% during the night time, have that uh, trigger on or off. And similarly to the, to the night mode, um, same kind of functionality there. Uh, control based on the light sensitivity. Um, so with the incoming light, what you can do is trigger blinds, you can trigger lighting. Um, so using the Shelly blue door and window or the blue motion, you have those placed in, in windows essentially, and then you'd have those taught to the relays. So if you're looking to control the blinds, you'd put in a plus 2 PM potentially or a pro dual cover. And then you would essentially create the scenario where if there was a specific luminous intensity, uh, then trigger the blinds to come down. Same again for when motion's detected. Um, it's it's all easy to do within the app or with with any third party driver for for another platform control platform. Uh, not so popular here in the US, but the, the underfloor heating, that is something that we can do with the, the TRV or, or even just a regular relay. Um, and, you know, the temperature sensing. So I've mentioned it several times, but it's such a common use case. Uh, controlling blinds, it, it's very easy to do. So we got a pro 2 p.m. and a plus 2 p.m. Obviously, depending on your preference, whether you're doing a retrofit and you just want to put the relays behind a wall, or if you wanted to actually go more a centralized solution with pro devices. The cool thing with that is obviously you've got the automation with the sensors, but you could also use the button to, to trigger the blind control as well. Same with the garage door. Um, now, what you could do is um have your water heaters plugged into a uh whether it was a, a plus plug or a plus one pm and essentially turn on the water heater at non-peak hours um to essentially give you the most power during the cheapest time of day and similarly you can auto automate irrigation systems based on sun sunrise and sunset hours that's if, if you don't have a, a smart system already, but it allows you to do that kind of thing as well. So I've mentioned the app a couple of times. Um, essentially, we've created a, a great app that allows you to um, add devices, control your entire ecosystem, or you can just use you know one or two functionalities within that and whatever works best for you guys. So. We have the Shelly Cloud app that allows you to work with scenes, scenarios, groupings. You can see it by room. And what you can also see is all of your consumption data. So say you've got your Pro 3EM device and you wanted to see how much money you were saving from your solar. You can do that through the app or the web interface. So the Shelly Cloud app, uh, that it's extremely easy to add devices. So uh, you open open the app at the bottom right. You would see a plus button, a plus icon. You hit add new device, and once the devices have power, they will automatically be able to be scanned on the on the Wi-Fi network. So, unless you were doing a more enterprise system and it was you had barcode barcodes lied out for that, which we see pretty regularly, then that's probably the best way to do it. Unless you were using the Bluetooth sensors. Um, so you pick the device to be added 
Um, but what it does automatically scan for your Wi-Fi credentials uh, on the, the closest Wi-Fi available, but you do have the option to to pick and choose the the Wi-Fi network. Um, hit connect, and excuse the uh, the Danish there. My my Danish colleague put this part of the presentation together. Um, but you definitely want to be specific with your device names and wherever possible take a picture and upload that picture into the app or into the into the web GUI so that you can see which device is where and that way you have quicker access to know where the devices are at any time and that will also allow you to program them into rooms groups and uh, now you can control your devices if it was that you wanted to go in and set up um, via the browser, uh, the RGBW2 allows you to pick with the color wheel. So then you just do uh, 192.168.33.1, and that would allow you to connect to that device specifically, for example. Um, uh, and that way you have the, the control over the individual device uh, as well. Um, again, just running through the, oh, sorry, got stuck there. Uh, now, so groupings. If you were to group multiple devices, this would allow you guys to create, you know, multiple smart automated scenes. Um, depending on your set up how many sensors what relays you had you can actually group those and have those available same with the scenes um and that would allow you to to have that autonomous control what one of the functionalities that i use the most is the scheduling um so 8 30 every night my son gets ready for bed his his bedroom light comes on at 8 30 and it pretty much goes off at 9 15. so i have that scheduled uh by specific day and time of the week um and that way i know that i'm not wasting the energy that uh that he normally would do if if i didn't have control over the the system uh and again heating and cooling is extremely uh energy efficient if you can get it set up right um and we could we have an entire way that, that you can do that as well uh i'm not going to go into this in in great detail this is more of a 102 but uh for those more advanced users we do have webhook available uh we do have mqtt rest apis uh web sockets anything available uh we have all the api documents open and available and we have scripting examples as well available on our website. Um, I have the links at the bottom of the, the slides here as well. Um, but you're always welcome to reach out to me. And if anybody reaches out to Cody, they're welcome to connect with me and, and get the, that documentation as well. So I've kind of gone for the more general integrations here uh, just for, for the sake of ease, but we do have uh, Alexa, Google Home, Smart Things, Home Assistant, all those regular kind of integrations. On another slide in another presentation, I have Crest Strong Control for RTR, URC, essentially every smart control platform besides Savant. <laughs> Unfortunately, we do have drivers for. So we have native integration with URC. We have third party drivers available for Control 4, RTI, Crest Strong. Elon, pretty much anything, anything else out there. So they will all be available. Um, and just so you guys can see, the the devices aren't exactly large, um, but they do. These are more European wall boxes. They do fit in. The European wall boxes are smaller than the the US size, so we're actually better off here for for our sizing. Um, and they just simply just pop into any of the wall box on the retrofit solutions. Uh, useful links for you guys. I'll make sure that these are available to you. Um, 
but this includes our support, our scripting, our API documentation, and any devices that we have available are available for the specs are available on our knowledge base. So if you go to Shelly.com, scroll to the bottom of the site, and uh, that would allow you to access the knowledge base. Uh, and that co comes with scripting, it comes with APIs, device guides. It also comes with use cases and uh, installation guides. Um, so yeah, uh, any further questions? I'm happy to answer them. Is there any idea when the new demo will be available? Yes. So uh, having reviewed the product roadmap, we actually just got a pro demo available. This is the zero to one, just like the demo two functionality. Uh, this guy will be available in probably end of March uh, after Chinese New Year. Um, but also we have the, uh, there will be a pro demo zero to 10, probably around Q2, Q3 coming with that as well. Uh, fully control, control for keypad demo. Yeah, so you would essentially have to wire one dimmer two per switch that you were trying to control. If you wanted to control it from the actual fixture though, and you were trying to run on an entire line, that would allow you to uh, that would allow you to run on that end and 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 do it that way. Um, there wouldn't be too much interference if you had to install multiple devices, um, but you do need to just make sure that you have enough uh, bandwidth on the on the router and the network. Um, a couple of use cases that. Uh, some of my top use cases, I, I did a survey around the office. A <laughs> uh, couple of things that, that was, was good is uh, low voltage lighting control with the RGBW2. That's the yellow guy. Uh, you can use that for LED strips, LED lighting for cabinets, for accent lighting, but also low voltage landscape lighting. We do actually have a power supply unit available that is outdoor rated. And that is really nice in combination with that. And I actually have one of those hooked up here. I should have said, here's one I made earlier. That's how they do it in the biz, isn't it? But essentially you've got your power supply unit that is connected to your RGBW2 and you have your LED strip. Um, and that allows you to, it, I, I'm going to regret plugging this in, but because it's so bright, um, but you guys can see immediately that, that that's available. You can control the color on it and yes, it, it can't, it doesn't pull through on the, on the screen, but it's actually shelly blue right now. Um, Yes, I do have them available in Canada, and uh, I can definitely get that information to you if, if Cody isn't able to help you up in Canada. Um, but uh, my information is right there. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Any other questions, guys? Happy to help. I'll always be available. Uh, anybody's welcome to send messages. Cody says, unfortunately, they don't do international shipping. Uh, reach out to me. I may be able to help you with Cody's blessing um, if you're up in Canada. Uh, I've got a couple of options for you. Yes, that is an Ibanez. It is a seven string Ibanez and I play way too much loud music for my wife's eardrums. <laughs> Thanks, Brad. Uh, that was actually an 18th birthday gift uh, from my mom. She traveled and went and picked it up and hasn't left my side since. 
just to give you guys an idea on some of the product roadmap, um, we have, first off, our Z-Wave devices will be coming, probably be available around May time besides the plug. So the plug will allow you to, to start integrating Shelly on the Z-Wave level. We'll have essentially the same as any, uh, let me go back to the plus devices. Uh, there we are. So any of the plus devices, plus one, right the way through to the plus 2 p.m. And even the i4 will have a way Z-Wave i4 plus one, 1 p.m., 2 p.m. And the same in the uh, pro versions as well. So we'll have a Z-Wave Pro 1, 1 p.m., 2, 2 p.m. So we are working on the demo side of things, but they will be probably Q3, Q4 this year. Uh, any further questions, anybody is able to reach out to me by email, uh, phone, carrier pigeon, or as they say in Game of Thrones, you can send a raven. Because it sounds fun when I say it. Uh, but no, my name is Steve Higgins. I'm sales director for Shelly. And uh, hopefully I'll, if anybody's heading out to Light of Palooza, I know Cody's going to be out there with the crew uh, and we will have a booth there as well. So Anybody's welcome to stop by and uh, look forward to seeing you guys on the next one.